Hi, my name is John. Welcome to the second part of a review of this Arctic 160 amp DC inverter T welder. I've had the welder for quite a few months now. I've done quite a lot of welding with it. What I intend doing today is go through the front panel, the various menus, how you set it up. It looks complicated, but once you actually get into it, it's not complicated at all. It's all one step at a time, dead straightforward stuff. I'm going to try and show some welding through a welding screen, actual welding, not to show you how to weld because I'm not a welder, just to show you what the machine is capable of doing and what the various settings do to transform the welding arc as well as the welding puddle. We'll power the welder up. The first thing you notice is all the LEDs light up red. What it's doing there, it's doing a self check on itself to make sure there's no faults. If there is a fault on the welder, it will be displayed as a code in the amperage setting. The buttons on this end here, they control your menus. You have nine preset menus where you can set up the welder to do either a TIG or a stick welding function. Program one is the one I use for basic DC TIG welding. We'll scroll through the program as you can adjust. These are the buttons that scroll through. You can see it going through the various things that you can adjust. The ones that it doesn't light up, these ones here, they're for pulse. They come into it later on when we're doing pulse welding. The first thing you'll find is a little gas bottle that's pre flow gas. Because I'm using a foot pedal, I don't want any pre flow. So scroll over to that one, pre flow set at zero. The next one is start amps. I want a nice crisp clean start, so I normally set that between 20 and 30 amps. We'll scroll around, start amps, it's set at 30. The next one is up slope. Because I'm using a foot pedal, we'll do it with any up slope. Up slope and down slope are used when you're tilting forte welding with a switch on the torch. So we'll go into up slope and that's set at zero. It then defaults on the main welding amps, that's it there, which goes from 5 to 160 amps on DCT. I'm going to be welding some 2 mil male steel plates and I work on 30 to 35 amps per millimetre. So 75, that'll be all right. To adjust it, you turn that. You turn it slowly, it moves up in ones. If you push it and turn it, it goes up in tens. From five to 160 amps. And we set it at 75. And clear from there. Next is down slope. As I've said, you don't want any down slope. So we'll move on to that one. That's set at zero. End amps are as low as it'll go. Five amps. The last one here is post flow gas. That's gas that comes out of the torch when you're finished welding. It keeps the tungsten from oxidizing. It also helps prevent oxidization in the weld pool as the weld cools off. We'll go to that one, I like about 10 seconds, 9.8, that's good enough. And these are all adjustable as well. I'm going to do some welds, try and get a, a shot of the welds through a, a welding mask not to show you how to weld, just to show you what type of arc it's got and I'll probably do the same thing again, we'll go through the menu on pulse welding, the pulse welding is quite interesting and then we'll finish off doing some stick welding
Not bad. Not bad. So we're going to try and weld over the camera, but it's, uh, it's certainly welded together. Plenty penetration there all the way through. So just to recap, we're in 2T because we're using the foot pedal. We're in high frequency start. So you press the pedal, you get a high frequency spark, and that's what initiates the arc. It also has a lift start. Put a lift start, you touch the tungsten, and when you lift the tungsten, it starts the arc. That's sometimes used when you're welding in the electronic gear and you drill on a high frequency spark. This one here is a pulse. We've got a pulse off. It's pulse on, pulse off, and then stick welding. 2T, 4T. It, it seems complicated at first. But once you use it and you go through the various menus, it's quite simple. Well, it must be because I can work it. I want to talk a little bit about pulse welding. Pulse welding is used to put less heat into the material but still get good penetration. An ordinary DC welding, basically that's the, the trace you'll get, a flat DC line. In pulse welding, we break the line up. So we'll go along and then we'll have a pulse of power. And we'll have a pulse of much lower power. And it goes up again. So what we've got here, that's power. So that bit up there, that's amperage. And time for each cycle is between that bit there and that bit there, that's time. The amp is just set here maximum amps. If I'm welding, say 2 mil, I would set that 75 to 80 amps. And your base amps is a percentage of your maximum amps. Normally I go for 10%. Your time period between one cycle and the next cycle is variable between, I think it's half a second and 500 times a second. I'll do it once a second. 3 times a second and then 10 times a second you can see how it works it really does tighten the bead up the faster you make the cycles happen so basically that's all it is you're chopping up your DC line into pulses now we'll power the set up you get your normal array of LEDs as it does a self test default it onto position 1 I'm going to go to position 2 or Program 2, which is what I use for pulse, see it's got there, pulse on. For sudden high frequency start, the maximum amps are set at 81. We'll scroll through the different parameters are now adjustable. See now it's showing base amps, pulse time, pulse frequency, the rest just the same. No gas, start amps. 25 ish, no upslope, but the peak amps 81. The next one down is a percentage, percentage of your main amps. So we want base amps fairly low, we'll set it at 10%, so it's going to go between 80 and 10 amps. The next one is frequency. That's good between 0.5 and 500. I'm going to set it at one, one pulse per second or one cycle per second. I'll get some footage through the camera and you can see what sort of difference it makes. I'm going to leave everything exactly the same except I'm going to change the frequency. This time I'm going to go for three. This time we'll go up to ten.
Okay, these are the three sample pulse welds. That's one pulse a second. That one's three pulses a second. You can see how it's a much tighter arc, and there's a lot less heat going into than that one. And that one there is ten pulses a second. That's it there. That one there is 250 and that's 500. The 250 is the one that I use most of the time if I want to use pulse. To sum the welder up, uh, basically it's a really good little set with lots and lots of adjustments. If you like playing with different adjustments, this is the one to use. It also has a good straightforward DC arc which produces excellent welds. One of the main things I like about it is that it runs off a 30 amp plug. Also like the name memories, which means I can set the welder up for somebody else to use. The only thing I don't really like is the torch. It's not a bad torch, but it's a torch that you can weld at 160 amps with. This welder will do 160 amps, but ideally you want to be in the sort of 20 to 120 range where you would use a WP9 torch, which is much lighter. It's a nice enough torch, it's just not the torch I prefer to use. Flex head torch, but I do like a WP9, that's just my personal preference, and I'm just telling this the way it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. I could just go around here with a MIG, but I've got a little TIG welder, uh, like on demo from Artec, so I'm going to give it a try with that. It's starting to get a bit of decent video of TIG welding this together. I'm using a 2.4 Tungsten gas lens in a number 6 cup and that's not a bad weld for a mechanic that pisses about I don't think it'll come off <laughs> 